Nanning. The last place I will walk about. This place is so unknown that even many Chinese people have never heard of it. Nanning. Do you mean Nanjing? The weather is terrible. It only has two seasons: summer and winter. I'm sweating like crazy just standing under the shade. It's now October 4th, and you're looking at 34 Celsius, bright sunny day. It's so crowded. You're probably gonna get a heart attack driving here. So why would I give a damn to this city? Well, the answer is pretty obvious because it's my hometown. And like any other Chinese cities, it developed so fast during the last decades. There weren't so many skyscrapers 10 years ago. However, this is not what I remember Nanning as. So I mean it when I say it's the last place I would vlog about because I don't know how. So I thought the best way to show you guys what Nanning is really like is through what I eat in a day. It's now 9.30 a.m. and usually I don't wake up this early during holiday and um, I don't eat breakfast. But just for you guys, we are gonna go get some Nanning breakfast today. Before I begin the day, I want to stay for the record that we Nanning people own the second most e-bikes in China. Usually I would just get food delivery in the morning because I'm so lazy or else I would just ride on the e-bike and go to any nearby rice noodle spot to get a quick breakfast slash lunch. <laughs> but today I want to show you guys a really authentic and down-to-earth rice noodle spot in Nanning. So we're gonna drive there. I swear, I only drive today because the place is beyond the 5km convenience circle, not because I'm being lazy. And to be honest, it's easy to get angry when you're not the one driving a two-wheel. There are more than 20 kinds of rice noodles in Nanning. But my favorite is this raw press shengzha rice noodles. It is sour. Made from fermented rice dough. As for the taste, people from outside of Nanning will find it like sour and stinky. But we Nanning people love it. The sour taste is appetizing to eat in such a hot weather. And people also don't understand why we have stools but we don't sit on it. We use them as table. I just want to say that this is the way of Nanning. We're too chill to give a about other people's opinion. At this moment, I was looking at the police officers coming this way. And I thought I might have park and no parking area. Ay, that's something you don't have to worry about if you ride an e-bike. Another tip for visiting Nanning, don't wear black. <laughs> oh, I took a nap and I came back to life. <laughs> I didn't eat lunch, of course, and I'm going to Yamcha with my friend. Yamcha is also one of the eating habits of Nanninger. Now it's already 1 p.m. People of my mom's age should have finished eating by now. It's been 20 minutes since I sat down, and my friend's still not here. In fact, the purpose of Yum Cha is never to eat but to be with the people you care, to talk shit about other people, such as your boss and your co-workers. I remember when I was a kid, my mom and her friends could sit from 9 in the morning until 12 noon. A coffee spot inside, the most local food market. 
I didn't come here just for the coffee. You are what you eat. I think the food market is the most representative place of a city, representing the local food culture with authentic native food and fresh fruits and produce. It shows the character, the rhythm, and lifestyle of Nanning. I told Nicole and Jack that the best way to get around Nanning is to ride on an e-bike. What if you don't have an e-bike? It's okay. While other cities in China have share bikes, we have share e-bikes. These shared e-bikes are generally limited to 20 to 25 kilometers per hour. You can race with it, but during rush hour, it runs faster than car. It only took me 10 minutes to the restaurant to eat dinner with my family. <sighs> it's been a freaking long day. It's now, let's see, 9.45 almost 10 p.m. and you know in some of the northern cities in China people are already in bed at this time but in Nanning the night just began like this is also the pickle vegetable that I took Nicole and Jack to eat but this is not the same place I took them to last time. I'm sorry guys, I didn't bring you here because this area is way too unpolished. I don't know if we can deal with it. And the place I'm going to eat late night snacks at is even more unpolished. You can't find a more local street than this. <laughs> this is Lao Yo style cooking, the icon of Nanning. Lao Yo translates directly as old friend or old buddy. I didn't have a chance to tell Nico and Jack the story of Lao Yo rice noodles last time, and now I have to say it. Look at the lineup. There was an old man in Nanning used to visit a tea house every day, but once he didn't show up for many days due to a flu. When the tea house owner heard about it, he prepared a bowl of hot noodles for the old man with pickled bamboo shoots, chili, fermented soybeans, and crushed garlic. The sour and spicy noodles helped the old man recover fast. The old man was grateful to the tea house owner and later sent him a plaque reading, Old friend visits often. That bowl of noodle is now called Old Friend Noodles. That's how it got its name. Of course, I don't eat Lao Yo noodles to cure the flu. For me, it's home. It's my carefree childhood with joy. Over the years, I've been to and lived at many cities and fell in love with some, but buried deep in my heart, flow in my blood. The taste of Lao Yo or I can say the taste of Nanning cures me. All right, so that's it for my Nanning episode. Remember to hit the like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week.